Hello everyone and welcome to our Alumni Talks webinar. Today we will give you first-hand information about the Business School Executive MBA experience. My name is Martina and I'm the moderator of this webinar on behalf of UNIMI team. Please welcome our panelists today, as well as Associate Director of Admissions and Recruitment, Judith Puigbo, and one of their successful Executive MBA alumni, Dania Juoni, who will tell you more about her experience during and after the program. They will tell us about the educational journey and how acquiring a degree from a study business school can enhance your career. You will be able to send your questions during the entire webinar by typing them in the chat box or in the Q&A box. And right now, everything is set and I'm giving the floor to you, ladies. Perfect, Martina, thank you so much. Thank you everybody for attending this session. Uh, yeah, let me go to the next slide so you will have the, our uh, named here. So my name is Judith Pujbo. I'm in the admission department at the Sally Business School. We are a big team of 15 people starting again to travel all over the world. I am personally in charge of Switzerland and Middle East. Um, so I know that today we will have people from very different countries. So after the session, I will connect you with your associate director. Okay. And we have here uh, Dania as Martina uh, introduced her as one of our successful uh, alumni, of course, our, all are successful in different ways. But Dania, I think, has been an example of a triple jump after the executive MBA. That's why I thought your experience could be very inspiring for the audience. So Dania, maybe you want to introduce yourself a little bit better. Sure, Judith. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. And thank you for attending this webinar. So my name is Dania Juni. Uh, on a personal level, I'm a mother of two kids. Um, I'm originally from, from Lebanon. I was born and I lived there for all my life until uh, two months ago, where uh, we moved as a whole family to Luxembourg because I got a very good offer at Amazon here. So I'm open to any questions you would like to know about how I managed my um, education at Izade as a mother and as a full-time employee. And I'm ready to share as well the experience of the beautiful, diverse culture there. Perfect, thank you. So, well, my idea today was briefly explain a little bit about Izade very quickly, and then let's go more into, deep into the executive MBA specifically, okay? Regarding Esade, some just quick key facts. We have now currently on campus um, 10, more than 10,000 students. There are more than 90 uh, nationalities uh, represented on campus. This is a big number. Of course, they are not all doing the executive MBA because we have a business school with a bachelor. Uh, we have several bachelors in business. Um, we are introducing now, for example, the new one in artificial intelligence. Uh, we have all masters of science, MBA full-time, and all the executive MBAs. We also have law school, both bachelor and masters, and we have executive education. That's why it's um, a quite big uh, school. We have the triple accreditation. Not many schools can tell that. So it's something that I always like to highlight. More important, well, apart from key factors, I think what is important from the school also is explaining the DNA. And of course you can put anything you want in a PowerPoint. So I think this slide, I would prefer Dania on your personal view, uh, if, uh, especially this hands-on and collaborative spirit. Uh, did you really feel it and how? I probably think that you will explain it better than me. Sure, thank you, Judith. So yes, definitely there is a collaborative spirit, not only among the students, but with the faculty and staff as well. Um, it all starts with the, uh, the classes, the group work, um, how everyone is there, uh, not only to succeed, but to uh, help others and share knowledge with others. It's also about the culture at Izadi. Um, for me personally, I, I really felt that I was um, not attending like an official organization where things go with bureaucracy, etc. It's a, it's a very helpful culture. Uh, they help me in, in several matters, uh, 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 the faculty and the staff. And um, what, what made it so special is that 
with the diversity of the group. We were 40 students and we were from 30 different nationalities, but this is not the only thing that made it diverse. It's also, uh, we came from different backgrounds, From we had different experiences and we, with the business cases that we worked on, we were not only studying theories, right? So there were a lot of hands-on experience in terms of business cases, in terms of digging deep into, you know, some, some cases that eventually led me to apply to Amazon, by the way. So all this made it a beautiful experience to show you how the real world works. It's not about only theory and studying. It's about how real companies work, you know, with collaboration, with, with real business cases. And this is what made me ready to, to face and to be able to be part of such a multinational company. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Sure. Um, the executive MBA, you will be alternating Barcelona and Madrid campus. I personally, I'm based in Barcelona and I am from Barcelona. So I might be a bit biased if I say it's the best uh, city in Spain. <laughs> I'm joking. Madrid is amazing. I just was there last weekend visiting uh, Arco Contemporary, uh, Contemporary Art Exhibition, which was amazing. So we are super lucky to have two big, amazing cities. Uh, Dania, tell me the truth, which was your favorite, or this is like your two kids, there's no favorite, right? <laughs> well, I have one favorite. Look, okay. Madrid for me is the classy lady, okay, I, I, this is how I name it. Uh, the campus is beautiful, the city is amazing, and but the good thing about Barcelona is that even when, he ha when we had classes in December and in January, where it's supposed to be super cold in Europe, the weather was amazing in Barcelona, you know, it's always like this um, friendly environment, even with the weather, you know, even the weather tells you, come to me, <laughs> come to Barcelona. So I would prefer Barcelona, but directly after it, like Madrid is my second, you know, right after Barcelona. Yeah. Well, I, I guess also it's because Beirut and Barcelona, I think they are very similar cities. You have like the mountain, the city. The exactly. Beach. So yeah, yeah, in fact, yeah. when I'm in Beirut, I never feel homesick. I, I imagine exactly. some connection there. And that's why you felt so comfortable. True, Great. true. So and even the case, people. Yeah. So in Spain, yeah. even the people are super wel welcoming, super friendly, you know. So you get excited when you go. I was so lucky that it was before COVID. I had to go to premises, you know, and to 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 move around with the classmates that become friends and now are like family, you know. So you enjoy every bit. It's just that not that only the classes; it's also the culture mm. in Barcelona and everything. Even in Madrid, and the food, same thing. And the food, of course, <laughs> Don't always. <forget> the food. <laughs> true, true. Perfect. <laughs> uh, well, also I wanted to highlight that we have seventy-two international chapters. Uh, different clubs, 60, well, this is a number I think now it's even more, it's 70,000 alumni members all over the world. Even in Luxembourg, we have a chapter there. In Beirut, we recently also opened. So also these international connections, having this Estadio alumni chapter, whatever you are moving, I'm sure that that is somehow like belonging to an international club where you have connections all over the place. I don't know if in your case you are you just moved to Luxembourg recently. I don't know if you had the chance uh, to meet the people there, but in any case, um, we have uh, 72 international chapters. So I don't know where are you coming later, maybe in the chat you want to explain me, but I'm sure that in your city, you will have a chapter of the Saudi Alumni. So let's go more in detail for the executive MBA. Uh, here are some of our rankings. I would say the one I personally feel more proud of is uh, the um, diversity. We have been number one or two, depending on the QS diversity. Diversity in, in rankings, they count gender and uh, number of nationalities. For me, diversity is more. But Dania, maybe you want to share a little bit the diversity you had in your, in your class. Uh, to be honest, Judith, this is the most diverse community that I've ever been, you know, exposed to. And uh, what I told you in terms of gender, um, we were around maybe 47% uh, uh, females in the class, if I, or 49, even 49% in our I class. I don't remember exactly, no, 49, it was, we never reached that number 42. I think 47, it was close to 50. It was close to 50, but we, yeah. we haven't been there yet. It's my personal goal. Yeah. <laughs> no, and, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, I think we will be there, But it was close, close to 50. Yeah. And um, 
it was in terms of experience, it was in terms of nationality. We were 30, uh, actually 32 different nationalities. And this stays after you graduate. So this helped me a lot, this networking, this diversity. When I was, when I decided that I want to move outside uh, to, leave, to, to, to move to Europe, every single classmate, every single, f uh, like, uh, I don't like to call them classmates. They are really friends and family now. They were all ready to help me, you know, because of their networks and because we are all, you know, we stay connected even after graduation. Uh, we help each other out, not only in the business matters, but also on the um, personal matters. So this is why diversity is important one, but it's also because of the gathering of all the diverse thoughts, diverse experiences, diverse knowledge that also helped me, you know, and helped each one of us to learn from each other. So I basically learned from the books, I learned from the business cases, but I honestly learned from each and every one of them. And imagine 30 different nationalities, you know, each one as a book for me uh, and uh, as a knowledge center for me. So uh, diversity is always important, always yeah. gives added value. Thank you. Um... Well, we will see later. This is a little bit like the big picture of, of the academic content will go later, but the idea is to go from more generic, from awareness to build, connect, decide where you have your electives. That's the last part would be the more tailor-made. Uh, but we will see that later in the following slides. Let me hear you see. Of course, don't worry. I'm not going to go through all one by one, all, all, all the courses. You have all this information in the website. Also in the website, if you click over each course, you will have a more in deep description. But as you see, I mean, of course, this is an MBA. I don't have to explain that. You will have the big picture. You will go through all the different functional areas of the company, but always going from more um, basic big picture and getting more in detail as much as the, I will move forward in the executive MBA. And last part is, as I mentioned before, is where you will have the elective. So that part, it's totally tailor-made. You can decide which electives, but also how many. Dania, how many electives did you, did you take? Do you remember more or less? I, I took, uh, I applied to three, but I eventually ended up with two only because one got canceled because of COVID, because we were uh, yeah, towards was COVID, part. yeah. yeah. In general, I, uh, I, I would say we ask a minimum of these two, three in order. If someone says, I've got a promotion, I'm moving to a new country, I want to finish my executive MBA, it's okay. Um, but if you want to do more, uh, the limit is the sky and your I, agenda. I think, yeah, I think Matas <laughs> took more than 10. Uh, I mean, in general, <laughs> average is six, seven electives. The yeah. record still, I think it's Isa Nakhra. She was from the previous year as yours. She did like 16, something crazy. Wow. I don't know yeah. how she yeah, could yeah. manage. <laughs> uh, but in average, people will do six, seven electives, okay? Yeah. And we also have the electives abroad, but I will show you that later. Um, and then um, through all the journey, we have what we call the, the, the G factor. Um, so the idea is that we, you will have this uh, guiding, what we call guiding. This is the leadership um, development. And Dania, maybe here, uh, you can explain that you have sessions with your coach, you had the experiential learning program at the very beginning. Um, I know we don't have much time and we cannot go through very deep all the presentation, but I think this part is something that we should explain better because sometimes when I find uh, students, um, that they already graduated at, and I asked, oh, what, what did you remember more? What did you miss more? Usually it's something that they always say, uh, I was planning to learn marketing, finance and whatever. I didn't expect to learn that much about myself. Exactly. And that was a surprise. So why, why don't you share a little bit more this leadership development that was across all the examples? Yeah, it's, it's, very, it's very interesting and very important. And uh, I wasn't expecting this as well. Well, um, usually we prepare strategies and visions for companies, right? You never expect to prepare your own vision or your own, like write your own strategy about where you want to be later on. And what this course helped me with, and especially my coach, because you will get to have a coach that has one-to-one -one sessions with you, uh, help guiding you on the right track to achieve your goals. And by this, I mean, not only like helping you apply for jobs or helping you to, to research on LinkedIn, et cetera. This is not it. What she, what she or he help you 
is by um, drawing the right path for you on a personal level on how to reach your goals. For example, for me, um, I had a goal that I wanted to reach and my coach was always reminding me that I need to put myself in the middle. That was what I needed help with. I was always putting my work or my kids or my friends in the middle and I wasn't looking or helping myself grow. So I always have her words in my head, you know, how she guided me on putting the right steps and the right building blocks to reach my goal. And this is where I am now because I was put on the right track through several coaching sessions to be able to, to reach my vision. And it's this is very general. There are a lot of details, but for the sake of time, we won't be able to go into details, but it's a beautiful journey. You get to learn a lot about yourself. And at least they will say it was not a surprise anymore. Exactly. <laughs> but still, we just gave a little bit of information. There's so yes. much that will surprise you. Yeah, yeah, Other yeah. Uh, general management skills. So here you would have negotiation, power and influence, communication, also uh, growth mindset. And here, for example, I would like to highlight all this entrepreneurial spirit that we have at the SADE. The final project, instead of being a theoretical thesis, you will have to do a business, a business case. So that's your final project, because that's how are you going to prove what you learned during the MBA. Dania, maybe here also you want to explain a little bit about your final business project. It can be an individual on a team basis. I, I don't remember. You did that it was a, a team group basis, project. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was Perfect. a group project with two energy experts in the group. Mm -hmm. uh, and my, my, um, my colleague uh, from Zen. Uh, our mm -hmm. ex-companies, uh, we joined efforts, two from telecom, we were mm -hmm. coming from telecom, and two from energy uh, industry, super expert in, uh, experts in the class. We joined efforts, and we did something that has to do with solar community. Um, it's a startup that uh, provides um, the, the accessibility for, resi for residentials to have uh, solar uh, energy in their homes, but by doing uh, like kind of subscribing to a very far uh, solar uh, plant. It's, it's, it's a very complicated uh, in terms of the um, details of the technicalities, but yeah. for the but customers, it's super helpful. When do you started doing the business case and how do you, when did it finish? Uh, how so, did you manage to work on a team? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, we were preparing it as part of the final project. And we, our passion, because we were so passionate about it, we are still working on it, you know, it's so oh. we presented, yeah, we presented it to, to the board, to uh, mm -hmm. our tutors, and uh, we had very positive feedback about it. We learned a lot as well from them, from their feedback. And after that, we kept on meeting and uh, presenting okay. it to companies to get sponsorships, etc. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Yeah, in fact, uh, every year, minimum two of these business projects and being real projects in, in We Europe. have Sonica now, right? So Sonica okay, is yeah. a drink. Uh, a group of colleagues, uh, of classmates did this and it's now a beautiful brand with very, very minimal alcohol in the drink. So it's a beautiful business case. And yeah, yeah. it's there, it's commercial now and they are selling. And they... Perfect, yeah, yeah. great. There are and several, then... uh, several businesses that saw the light. Yeah. No, and, and every year, every year, no matter which is the promotion, always a minimum to business plan yeah. going to real life. Mm -hmm. And then we have this global perspective. Of course, as Dania mentioned, the global perspective will come with the interaction uh, with your classmates from more than 30 different countries, of course, but also we have the study tours. Um, there are three. One, you can choose between Germany uh, or Israel or well, Berlin and or Tel Aviv, more specifically, because our entrepreneurial hub. Another one is in China. Let's hope that we can go again uh, there, be there. And the other one is in Boston. It's optional, but I always say, don't tell your partner, don't tell your boss. It's optional, okay? Um, something you want to mention about the study tours, Dania? I think this is the best part. <laughs> about like executive MBA at Izade is beautiful at many levels, the lead, the diversity, but the international tours takes it to another level. Uh, mm -hmm. We had the chance uh, of choosing between India and China and I went yeah. to India and 
this was an amazing experience for me at all levels. And it, I, I learned a lot at a personal level, but also at a professional level. Boston was amazing because we had to do the elevator pitch in front of yeah. experts in the field. And <laughs> this was also, and we were like taped and, and just visiting and having courses in Harvard and MIT was also super, you know, interesting for us as an experience. Mm -hmm. going into the campus, you know, seeing yourself finally in Harvard, like visiting this, you know, uh, mm -hmm. this university. Uh, Washington was also uh, amazing. We had uh, the chance to go into the White House, the, the, the building that belongs yeah. to the White House. And this was the last trip before COVID kicked in. Yeah, yeah. So, and Brazil, of course, and we had the chance in all those countries we had the chance to visit very important companies listen to speeches uh, by experts in all fields uh, and in all industries and the fact that you had the chance to get exposed to such cultures and such mm -hmm. businesses and such experts uh, mm -hmm. i was just you know the, the writing the learning journal afterwards was so easy because of all the knowledge that we learned yeah. there you know it, it was like giving passion inside those learning journals so yeah, we have been changing one. a little bit the study tour. So now it is that I mentioned, but it's true that the idea of all this business, this study tours is always doing business in the area. So we will mix with some master class from some local university, but also we are visiting companies, doing some network events with um, exactly there. So this is the, the idea. It's a one week, but very, very inspiring. Let's move forward. So um, these are the electives abroad. Remember the last part I told that in general, people will do six, seven electives uh, in those areas more interesting for them, but also very interesting. We have like sort of mini exchange programs with 14 different universities that you have here in the screen where you can do um, uh, one elective uh, abroad. But not only that, even if you stay in Barcelona, we are going to receive students from these 14 universities. So the diversity that Dania was mentioning, it will even increase more during the elective period. Of course, it's not the same someone that you have shared with them 20 months or someone that came for a weekend or a week or a couple of weekends. Of course, it will not be the same level of intensity of relationship but still very interesting for networking, uh, having business connections. So I would really, it's optional, it's not needed to do an elective abroad, but I always encourage um, those because it's also very opening, inspiring, meeting other kinds of business schools. I don't know, Dani, I don't remember, did you, do, did you take some elective abroad? Actually, the no. one that ca got cancelled was the one in- I uh, was the one abroad in London, yes. But I know from my classmates who got the chance to, to have those trips that it was uh, amazing in the term th that uh, they got to do uh, or solve business cases in a different yeah. way. Uh, they were just, you know, the whole ed education system sometimes differ from one university mm. to the other. And this exposure was, was important, you know. And even for one week, sometimes if you get to meet people, we still are in connect in in, um, in contact with people who came for wow. a visit. Yeah. So even if it's a one week, you're always mm -hmm. eager to meet new people when you are there, you know, yeah, and to stay stay in contact. So definitely Perfect. important at all levels. Perfect. Thank you. So here are the list. Also, again, all the information is in the website, but at least you have your sort of like the big big picture. Um, of course, this 90 seat is for all the different MBAs that we have, the, the monthly in English. Well, now we will go through the formats. But in any case, as not everybody asks for an internship, uh, an elective abroad, usually minimum for sure you will have the chance. Maybe it will not be the school number one priority. Maybe it will be the, the two. Uh, but I really, really encourage. And in sometimes there's other years that not many people are asking. So instead of one uh, study uh, elective abroad, you can do two or three. So I really, really encourage at least to, to try, okay? Then regarding the format, so we have the Italian MBA in English and the bilingual Spanish English. So the, the English format, um, we have this monthly, that's a format that Dania, you did, it's three days once per month. So Thursday, Friday, Saturday, you would be traveling Wednesday evening, you attend classes Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you go back home and Monday you are in the office again. And that will happen once per month during 20 months. So 
quite feasible, but of course you need the approval um, from the company because you're going to skip those two and a half days. Um, uh, of course, you also need to ask the family support, especially in your case because you have kids. So that's a family discussion as well, but it's feasible. And, and if you have done it, I mean, everybody can, right? It's, you have to organize. And some people were even leaving Saturday evening after class. So it's yeah. feasible just yeah. to catch If it's a, a short Saturday. flight in Europe, yeah. if there is availability, you can even uh, Saturday yeah. night, yeah, exactly. And then this year we are launching the new Ibrit uh, uh, format. Uh, the idea is of course, now with all this disruption of COVID, uh, we, this Ibrit life came to stay. So we had to adapt to the situation. We didn't have that before because we thought, well, the, the on-campus experience is very relevant. So we didn't want to do an online MBA, but then this is sort of the best of both worlds. Because let's face it, um, these last two years, we saw with all these travel restrictions that at the end, you could also still manage uh, from home, which has some advantages in terms of uh, time efficiency, of cost, of course. And, and But we don't want to meet that part of diversity, meeting each other. So this hybrid system, the idea is to have the best of both worlds. So you will be on campus, but not three days. Once per month, you will come for six days, once every four months. So I would say maybe those that are uh, on a short uh, trip, let's call it Europe, maybe the monthly format, it's very easy. But those that maybe are in other continents or they have a family with little kids, you were not so little, was easier maybe to manage in any case, or you are launching your new project. I don't know, many reasons that you think that three days once per month still is super challenging. This year we are launching this new, this new IPRIT which uh, there's of course less travel. Leave. And then all Saturdays, you have to attend classes online, but synchronous. So a specific time, you will have two frames, one in the morning, one in the evening. So because it was impossible to find the schedule both for the Americas and Asia. So there will be two time frames. So that's the new program that we are launching this, this year. And then the bilingual, uh, which is uh, Spanish and English, but English still is a must, but of course it will be more focused to uh, people based in Spain. We have also the monthly in Madrid, probably here, I guess, mm, mm, I would say here we are targeting people from all Spain and all Latin America. And then we have the weekly in Barcelona. Weekly is Friday uh, evening, Saturday morning here. Honestly, you have to be based, if not Barcelona, at least in the surroundings. But of course, those that maybe started recently the company, they don't want to add those two days per month then the weekend format for those based in Barcelona could be an amazing opportunity. So this is the, the format we, we have in total. Oh, and the hybrid, this is a, the, the, the schedule that I was uh, mentioning, but we have more information also in, in the website. But at least you see, you are traveling less times, uh, longer periods instead of three days is six, but instead of every month, it's every four months. But then remember all Saturday, you also have to block your agenda because classes will be online from home, but on a synchronous, so same, same time. So all the class have this like um, sort of virtual class where we are discussing, because that's the, the idea, right? Dania, maybe you can share the idea is that uh, professors will not be speaking. They're like a parrot. They will give you all the readings in advance. So then you can use the time in class for case discussion. So maybe you, you want to explain a little bit that typical yeah. day in the MBA. So what happens is um, before every module, even before the first one, you get readings, okay? Um, you get a lot of readings. So with time, you start know, knowing how to... Um, you get efficient, you get more efficient and more, uh, you get used to how uh, to read a lot of cases, uh, very useful cases, very interesting ones. They don't just give any cases. And what we need to do is to prepare for the coming module. Okay. And when the module comes, uh, we, as you said, discuss those cases. We get some uh, activities on them, some questions, some writings uh, to do to solve those cases. And then when this module is done, what happens is we we either have an exam only in finance, we sit for an exam, but if it's any other module, what you do is we have a kind of a submitting for a special case for this module, submitting um, a report for that as, an, it, as a way of evaluating the students on the module that passed, 
for every course, and then we get readings for the coming module. And this becomes the, this is the how, how it rolls, right? So between, if, between each two modules, you have preparation readings for the coming one and a case to solve for the previous one. But all can be managed. So when you see this all overwhelming information about business cases, about readings, about, you know, how will I be able to manage my time with all the busy schedule that I'm living in? I had a full-time job. I had two kids and things went smoothly only because I put a routine for myself. And this is very important for whoever is uh, listening now, whether you have a full-time job, part-time job, two kids, whatever. Currently, your time is full, right? With whatever you have. You will always have time for executive MBA, especially when you set a routine. Plan, for example, I had uh, an hour in the morning after I dropped my kids to school to study. I go to work and then after they sleep, I had, for example, another hour to study or two. If you build this routine very systematically, things will just flow and fall in place. You know, it's just that my, my very important tip to you, just build a routine. Yeah, very important routine, not only for the MBA, I think for <laughs> everything in life. <laughs> everything in life. <laughs> you have to plug your agenda at some point. Yes. Very yes. interesting. Class profile. Um, as I told you, well, this is something that, of course, changed a little bit every year. But like last promotion, we had 32 participants, 37 was the average age, 12 years working experience in average. We require a minimum five. But with five, it's quite uncommon. I would say usually, typically minimum, it will be seven. But average 12 means that someone will bring seven years working experience, someone else will bring 15 or 18 years working experience. But in average, should be something around, depending on the year, between 10 and 12 is a typical average work experience. 42% women. Um, so this would be the class profile from last year, more or less. It's quite similar year after year, but it can change out. A little bit. And we had uh, 25 nationalities. Of course, with COVID, there was some travel restriction. So the number of nationalities um, dropped a little bit, but now it's increasing again. 80% were international students, as I told you. I mean, for the Spanish people, we already have the Spanish EMBA and the weekly, the wiki, the, the weekly. Uh, so that's why here typically we will have more international students. And we had a total of almost 400 years of working experience. That's why we were mentioning that this diversity and this collaboration spirit is so relevant because with that 400 years of working experience almost in the classroom, I mean, 50% you will learn through professors, but 50% you will learn through your, your classmates, right? A big background, um, I mean, yeah, typically uh, engineering and business administration are usually the, the most common. Um, but uh, others, um, uh, when people say, oh, I studied uh, journalism, psychology, something, I say, don't worry, that brings diversity, so more than welcome. But it's true that engineers and business administration, economics, and those are maybe the most uh, typical. We had one psychologist and yeah. two pharmacists in yeah. class. And one of the pharmacists is now, she has her own lab, very successful for COVID. So it's kind of start up for her. And her business case for the final project was a hotel that she wants to, she's working on opening it in her country. So imagine oh. a pharmacist yeah. while working on a lab, but aiming to open a hotel because of, you know, the, the, the executive MBA and how it changes your perspective into things yeah. and your passion, you know. In fact, in the first interview, when I always ask, well, why an executive MBA? Only 15%, they say, because I want to start my own business. But when you ask the same question at the end, it's 25%. Yeah. So this entrepreneurial spirit is I can really relate. there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And in any case, I mean, I always say that you can also be very entrepreneurial in a big corporation, um, like of, uh, to have a new product, a new service. Exactly. So you can also be very entrepreneurial in a big corporation. I know that some of you also are business angels. That's another way of being also entrepreneurial, maybe investing in others' ideas. So there's many ways to be entrepreneurial, but poorly sure. entrepreneur. It's something that, uh, yeah, some people, they didn't know that was their dream when they started and that was a dream when they finished. It's true. And professional background, well, in terms of industry, functional areas, you can see very diverse. I don't want to go much in deep. I, I will send you the copy of the presentation if you want. 
and career impact, because at the end, this what is this for? Uh, I know that many of you are doing this investment in terms of finance, but also in terms of time, because you're looking to grow. Maybe it can be in your own uh, company, because uh, more or less one third of our students become company sponsored, so they are not willing to change in the short term. But uh, the other two thirds of the class, they come fully uh, sponsored by themselves. So of course they are looking at this change. Um, 75% uh, more or less, depending on the years, it was even more than 80%. They change uh, in less than two years, they change uh, jobs. Um, and well, here are a little bit of statistics, which can change also, but 46% uh, change company, 37% was an in-company promotion, 17% became entrepreneur, although there are some that they will become later because they have that brain there mm -hmm. still. Um, in their salary increases in average 30% in Spain, with the job market is a little bit more uh, stuck, but 52% international. Um, also because there's movement in terms of different countries, like probably it would be your, your example, right, Tanya? So in any yeah. case, you are a clear example. You change company in, well, well not so much industry, but uh, yeah. geographical location was a big, yeah. big, big change for you. Yeah, it was, it was a big change, but it was also driven from what I learned in the executive MBA, because when I started the executive MBA, if you had asked me back then, if I was mm. willing to change industry, I would tell you telecom till the end, you know, mm. I had 18 years of experience in, in telecom, I was so, you know, in, in my comfort zone of I know everything about telecom, and I was not willing to change, you know, I was happy where I am. But when we took the courses, and in my case, it was namely the supply chain course. Uh, we learned a lot about supply chain and Amazon had a big share of the business cases that we did. And Amazon actually appeared in several business cases that we did throughout several courses. Um, I realized this passion for this industry, you know, and I was then started to tell myself that um, if I was to change an industry, it would be to supply chain and logistics, you know, and this is how I started changing or, or you know, shifting my uh, passion towards uh, supply chain. And this is how, why I applied eventually. And I was willing to move with the family to follow my passion. Um, and I got the chance to be accepted because of my character, because of my experience, but also because of the education that I had on my CV, right? It helps whether we like it or not. It's an, a very added value when you get from it, when you get your executive MBA from a top ranked university. So this helped me in my interviews, but also as a, uh, as a value for my CV, right? Okay. And then, well, um, as today I have Dani, I don't want to be very going through the admission process. I would say my main goal today is that you know about the program. Of course, later on, if someone is really interested and is selling the short list, we can go deeper. Let me so like super quick let, just uh, say that the admission process, like I would say in, in, in any school, you need the official university degree, minimum, minimum five four or five years working experience, but as I mentioned before, usually less than seven, it's quite uncommon for an executive MBA because usually they would be targeting MBA full-time. Of course, very good business English level, like, like the English you use in, in your business daily life. Um, so those are the minimal requirements. And then you have to go through all the admission uh, process, which is the application online, uploading all documents needed, an English test. We have a personal interview also to, to really understand the, the candidate and finally the admission committee. We have an admission committee almost on a weekly basis because we have master's MBA. So once your application is completed, maximum in one, two weeks, you should have the answer. We try to go quite quick. And then regarding the fee of the program, I, hold on, I went. Um, 65,600 euros, you have uh, three different installments. Important, we have an early bird of 4,000 euros discount for those paying six months in advance the reservation fee. And we also have a program of scholarships, mainly scholarships we 
uh, try to give more support to women entrepreneurs and also geographical diversity. Of course, it's not the same effort. Someone taking a flight from, I don't know, Zurich, London, where you can come in two hours and 60 euros, or someone coming from another continent. Uh, so the more diverse is the geographical uh, origin, more support as well. But also we have loans with strategy finance and banks today. So, uh, but this is something that on a face-to-face -face meeting, I can go more in detail, okay? But at least you have the big picture. And here you also have my email. So Martin, I don't know if you are there because I'm sure that there's people that they want to ask some questions here in, uh, in the chat. Or yes. in the Q&A. Yes, we have a couple of questions. Thank okay. you so much, I'll, ladies. I'll stop sharing so then we can see each other faces better. Perfect. I try to, well, to speed a little bit because I know that after 40 minutes online, we get a bit, a bit tired. So let's go for the q and I believe that uh, you have answered some of the questions here. Um, okay. uh, some of our attendees, uh, has uh, typed some questions about time managing and um, questions like this. So I will skip them because I believe that you- Yeah, of course, uh, some maybe were answered in yeah. the presentation. Uh, we have some questions from a prospective international student mm -hmm. and he is asking about uh, visa requirements okay. and uh, what is the experience level that you have required? I believe that you have said that already. No, so, but something yeah, about in, in terms of experience, uh, something important, there's other executive MBAs that are very senior and they will require general management experience. In our case, this is more um, be a changer program, honestly. So in fact, I always feel more comfortable with and someone is under the average age because this will have more impact rather than being overqualified because here we want people that it's not only for networking really you, you we want people that they want changes they want to learn they want to share their knowledge so um, usually there's when it's more senior sometimes you want to just refresh ideas or just have new network no here it's uh you have to study i mean you can combine it with your professional life and and your family obligations but we really want people super motivated willing to do a lot of effort to learn to share there's a lot of teamwork. So also if you don't perform, it's not only your problem, it's your team problem. So this is a program for people that really they are willing to change, to grow, to develop. So for me, it's not so relevant if the experience is more managerial or less. If it's more middle level, it's okay. The important is that you want to share your experience and that you want to keep growing and, and, and learning. But also there's people super senior, but they are younger than many, <laughs> young people so for me it's not so important the number of years it's more understanding your goals are you really really willing to change um that's for me the the main main criteria great thank you there are one more question about visas so do you know how long yeah. in advance they should start with their visa procedures well, uh, Danny, how did you manage your visa? Because this is important. We don't offer a student visa because student visa, it should be 20 hours per week. And this is 30 hours per month. So usually, I don't know how Dania now she will explain, but usually they take a one year uh, tourist visa of multiple entrances. But maybe Dania, you can share. In my case, I was lucky to be honest because I had a four years uh, Schengen uh, mm -hmm. ahead of applying also even for the Ezadi, so I, I could go and come easily. Mm -hmm. But I can answer uh, regarding my colleagues, my classmates. Uh, so what they were doing, the non-Europeans, they were just applying uh, between modules, you know, they were applying and some were getting three months, some were getting six months, so they would cover several modules in advance. And then when the time comes, they just between two trips, just apply, you know, and it was always working perfectly and seamlessly. Yeah. Even first time, if someone applies last moment that didn't have the time, first time you can come as a tourist with a tourist visa. I think. Yeah, I was coming in a tourist visa all the way. Yeah. It, yeah. It's not a problem, yeah. And also something important is once you finish your executive MBA, you have a one year search job yes. visa. Yes, this is very important as well. Many uh, friends use this from the class as a searching, searching for the job. I'm not sure that, uh, about the right naming, but it's something like job search yeah. or job, yeah. 
it's a one year visa true mm -hmm. Great, thank you for this answer. Uh, someone that has joined a little bit earlier, uh, the uh, a little bit yeah. later the webinar, I okay. uh, was wondering if the program and faculty are the same in both campuses. Yeah, yeah. In fact, the program uh, you alternate Barcelona and Madrid campus. So Dania, she was attending in both campuses. So it's not that you have monthly in well, pro, no, yeah, one one pro, mm, the monthly in Spanish is always in Madrid. Okay, but the, the program that I was explaining more, the profile is a program that Dania did the monthly in English. That one, you will be alternating Barcelona and Madrid campus, more often Barcelona, but yeah. some of the models are in Madrid. Mm -hmm. Okay, but it's yeah. a multi-campus program. Yeah, and then someone here in the chat is asking statistics of students who find the job after the executive MBA. So during the executive MBA, everybody's working. In fact, it's usually a requirement is to be working. We can make an exception. There's always someone in transition between jobs and, and we can maybe we'll have a couple of students that at the, when the program starts, they are not working. Um, so the statistic I, I shared like four or five slides ago is 75% of the students, they change job in less than two years among those mm, 37, I think it was a job promotion in their own companies. But uh, uh, just to add, sorry, yeah. there is always the, uh, the careers department that helps yeah. us. So I, I, I was I benefited from this thanks to you. Uh, so I, I was put in contact with someone from the careers department who helped me how to uh, better build my CV. And she also helped me how to approach uh, jobs in LinkedIn. So you always even throughout your MBA, you will be um, invited to the careers uh, meetings they always give you guidance on how to apply how to approach companies and how to build your cv this helped me a lot because there were things that i was doing the basic thing like putting the basic thing in my cv and things evolved with time and i didn't know so mm -hmm. um, yeah so she helped me a lot yeah she even gave yeah. me access to a tool because i'm an izadi alumni and uh, i the, the tool helped me to you know uh, better shape my cv yeah, exactly. Career services, the idea is that they will help you how to improve your CV, your LinkedIn, how to face a job interview. If you are targeting specific industry or geographical location, they can connect you with companies. So it's a tool that you have available, of course. What is the ideal candidate for a study? Very good question. Um, so here I would like to go to our slogan, do good, do better. And this would uh, be aligned with a sentence that it's not mine. I wish it was mine. It's not mine. But the, our dean, he always say at the SADE, we don't want the best managers of the world. We want the best managers for the world. So, of course, we are all working business. We don't work in NGOs. So, of course, we are business oriented, but always trying to, at the same time, have social impact, trying to help each other, this diversity. So we are very open-minded. We really want everybody to be very respectful with other cultures, other religions, other sexual orientations. Um, it's this kind of thing that it's sometimes difficult to, to read in, in your CV or on your essays. That's why we always will have a personal interview with a candidate to make sure that we share these values, team spirit, collaborative mindset. So if someone is super sharky, competitive, maybe a study is not the best place for them. So I hope I answered the question. Uh, I can see three questions about the test and test course about GMAT. Yes, I know. Yeah, yeah. I went very fast there because I know we were running out of time and I thought that was the boring part once you already know that the study is your school. But OK, I know that's the more stressful part of the admission yeah. process, I know. We accept GMAT, GRE, Executive assessment, which is quite new. I think they launched it maybe three, maximum four years ago. That's, it, it's from GMAT as well, but specifically only for executive MBAs. On top of that, we also have our own personal test at the Senate, which is quite similar to GMAT, but good news, it's a bit shorter. So you still remember your name <laughs> when you finish the exam and you can bring calculator. Because in real life, we have calculators. Even if we struggle with finance, we are going to use an Excel. We are not going to tell. We don't really need the mental calculation skill. Um, regarding the tests, here I will be very transparent. For a master's, where people will bring uh, maybe one year working experience only, of course, the test is super relevant. 
MBA full-time, where you will bring typically four or five years working experience, it starts to be less relevant because professional experience will be more important. But this is an executive MBA with 12 years working experience in average. So of course, test in an executive MBA will never be the main criteria. Your professional experience will be more relevant. Why are we asking the test anyway? First, it's a, it's, a, it's a natural filter. It doesn't happen very often, but sometimes say someone submits the application, we arrange the interview, they upload the documents, and then last part is a test, and they say, oh, I have to postpone because I was traveling, I have to postpone because I was sick, and they keep postponing, they never had time for, for the test. If you don't have time for doing the test, for sure you don't have time for an executive MBA, how lucky we are that we realized before you invested the 60,000 plus uh, euros, you know? That's one. And also because mm, in my case, for example, I studied law. So with the verbal part, I, I, I feel comfortable. It's okay. With numerical, I struggle a little bit more. We look more than numerical because we know that those that struggle a little bit with the numerical, they could later struggle a bit with finance. No problem. But if we have that information in advance, we have an online finance course, which is optional. But in some cases, we say, listen, in your case, really, you have to do the program because if not later, you will struggle with finance. So it's a piece of extra information. Please don't get super stressed uh, with the test. And we accept any GMA, GRE, or executive assessment, or the SADET test. The SADET test, the advantage is that it's included in the application fee. You don't have to pay any extra. But of course, it's only for SADET. Great. Thank you so much for this detailed information. And I can see one more question. Um, does SADET uh, have something like career center or career department to help yeah, yeah. Uh, students? It's what, what Dania was explaining that they help her. We call it career services department. Mm -hmm. And yes, they usually will help you more towards the end of the program, once you already saw, sort of have the SADE stamp in your CV, right? But if someone loses their job in the middle of the executive MBA, of course, we, they will help you in advance. The idea of these career services is how to improve your CV, your LinkedIn profile, how to face job interviews, uh, connect you with recruiters, headhunters, if you are targeting a specific company, maybe we have some connection there that we can uh, share with you. So, of course, I always say I cannot guarantee that we will find you a job because we are not a relocation agency. What I can guarantee is that the study will help you to find a job, like was the example uh, that Daniel mentioned. Great. Thank you. And really one more last question in the chat box. What makes the study attractive for employers in comparison with other business schools in Europe? I think that yeah. this question is a great uh, end of Yeah, the, very good of point. Our exactly. Yeah, I would say uh, what we were mentioning at the beginning, the DNA of a study, you know, this entrepreneurial spirit, this uh, collaborative mindset. I think recruiters, they know that, and that's what they like from the side profiles, that they know it's people think out of the box, connecting ideas. You have this more creative mindset, collaborative way of doing business. So I think this is the DNA of the school and that's what recruiters are looking at. And we have a lot of focus in leadership, innovation, entrepreneurship. So if the job has relation to innovation, entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship, as I mentioned before, doesn't mean only startups, also can be a big corporation, but they are willing people that they are very autonomous and that they can create new business, new services from scratch. So that's what I would say recruiters I, appreciate I would like from to Sally. Add I would yeah, like please, to add Daniel. something. I think what is that the alumni are doing in companies, how they are excelling and how, how they are adding value. They are also um, giving a very good impression about whoever comes from Ezadi will do added value, you know, because I have a lot of colleagues that come from Ezadi and I know that they are excelling in whatever they are doing. So this is helping diversity definitely because it's part of the DNA of, of Ezadi. Uh, diversity is not something, it's, it's like a pillar for Ezadi and companies uh, are eager to have diversity in their company and their, in their environments now, not like before. So diversity is becoming a hot topic and they realize now it's not just for uh, marketing uh, their mm -hmm. companies that they are diverse by science, the more diverse a company is, the more productive it is. So coming from such a university that has diversity as one of their main pillars, they know ipso facto that this will give an added value, you know, for their productivity and for their uh, progress as a company. Yeah, very good. Great. I think that this was a wonderful way to finish. Yeah. This.
uh, <laughs> this uh, webinar. Uh, ladies, thank you so much for sharing your time with us today. Oh, no, my pleasure. Uh, yeah, thank you for this really informative uh, presentation. Um, you will receive a link to all of you that attended today, uh, a link with the recording of the whole webinar, so you, you rewatch it and um, maybe send some questions to um, Sade uh, email. I'm, I'm here in thank the chat reminding the again you. my email. As I thank told you, you I'm in charge only of Switzerland and Middle East. So when you approach me, send me your CV or at least where are you based so then I can connect you with your associate direct conversations. Great. Thank you one more time and wish a good day, good afternoon to everyone. That's Thank you, Martina. Martina. Thank you, Unimax. See you again. Bye. 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 Bye.